Your, your intention for Hajj has to be to make Hajj. And the business is coincidental. But if you really, you make Hajj to make business, or you, you are the Imam of a mosque to take money, or you give Dawah as a business, this is not, or you fight Jihad for money, then this is not acceptable to Allah. This deed will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the lesser shirk. And this, brothers and sisters, is something so dangerous. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was, I think it was Ibn Abbas, he said that it is like a black ant on a black rock in a dark night. That's how much you notice it. Will you notice a black ant on a black rock in a dark night? Would you notice a black ant on a black rock on a dark You will never see it. This is how Riyā is amongst us, showing off. It is very dangerous. It is very dangerous. So brothers and sisters, I want to finish by reading one hadith. Excuse me. One very beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not very long. Inshallah, it's very nice hadith, very beneficial. Okay. This, uh, this hadith was collected by Ahmed and Tirmidhi and it was narrated by Al-Harith Al-Ash'ari, Al-Ash'ari. and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Verily Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded Yahya the son of Zakaria with five words to act upon and to enjoin upon the children of Israel but he put it off Then Isa Alayhi Salam said to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you with five things to act upon and to tell the children of Israel to act upon it. Either you command them or I will. And so Yahya replied, I fear if you do it before me, I will be swallowed up by the earth and punished. So he gathered the people together in Al-Quds and they filled up the masjid. And he sat at the top of a wall and he said, Verily Allah the blessed and exalted has commanded me with five words to act upon and to call you to act upon. The first of them is that you worship Allah and you do not associate anything with Him. For verily, the one who associates partners with Allah is like a man who buys a servant with his own wealth be it gold or silver, and says to him, this is my house, and this is the work that I have for you. So do it and render me its fruits. But the servant does it, and he renders the fruits to another. Which of you will be pleased with such a servant? This is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Yahya ibn Zakaria of shirk. How many of you would like to have somebody if you have a business, you employ that person in the business and you say, work for me. That person takes their wages, that person takes their money, and then they go and work for someone other than you. How long will you employ someone like that? What would you do with someone like that? Would you be pleased with someone like that? Oh brothers and sisters, we are breathing Allah's air. We are eating Allah's food. We are dressed in the clothes that Allah has provided for us. We are living the life that Allah has given us. Yet sometimes we find we are not working for Allah, we are working for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of this hadith, because I won't read the rest of it, I'll just read the end. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because also he enjoined upon them to pray and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give the charity, the zakah. These are the things that Zakaria enjoined upon the Bani Israel. And with each he gave a beautiful example. But I leave that out now. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I too enjoin upon you five things which Allah enjoined upon me. Hearing, obedience, striving, meaning jihad, migration, hijrah, and the jama'ah, the community, the jama'ah. Verily, if someone separates himself from the jama'ah, the, from the community, even by a hand span, he removes the bridle of Islam from his neck unless he returns. And one who preaches with the call of jahiliyyah will be amongst the inhabitants of hell 
And then a man asked, O Messenger of Allah, even if he prays and fasts? And the Prophet replied, even if he prays and fasts and claims to be a Muslim, so cool by the call of Allah who named you Muslims, believers in Allah. Brothers and sisters, then I will finish with one last point. One other aspect of kufr and shirk that we find ourselves immersed in. And that is the call to nationalism. That is the call to tribalism. It is the call to nationalism. It is that call that divides us where people stand up and they call to the call of Jahiliyyah. They call to their nation. They call to my country. Where it's Lebanon, Turkey, Australia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia. Everyone now is fighting and calling people to their nationality and to their nation. As if they are better and superior because of the country. The country that was devised for them by who? By the kuffar, subhanallah. The call of jahiliyyah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam called it. So whoever calls with this call of jahiliyyah, then they will be from the denizens of the hell. Whoever calls to nationalism and tribalism and parties and sects and groups and splitting this ummah, they call to the call of jahiliyyah. They call and they will be the denizens of hell even if they pray and they fast and they call themselves Muslims. So brothers, Muslims, we are believers. We must cling to the jama'ah. We must cling to the community. We must cling to the jama'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, فَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا Hold all of you together to the rope of Allah and do, do not be divided. And what is the rope of Allah? The rope of Allah is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, كِتَابُ اللَّهِ It is the Qur'an. It is the Islam, the deen, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. This is Hablillah, Kitabullah. This is what we hang on to. This is what you, we unite upon. This is what we go back. We treat what Allah has made halal as halal. What Allah has made haram as haram. And we should obey Him and obey His Messenger. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the means for our returning to our strength. To regain the victory and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To once again be the best of all nations on the face of this earth. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. First question. Is asking for God's forgiveness through the Prophet Muhammad... Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is shirk or is it just haram? No, of course asking forgiveness or asking anything through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Isa or any other Prophet is shirk. To call upon any person whether he is a martyr or whether he is a Prophet or a righteous person and seeking forgiveness through them or asking that person to ask Allah for forgiveness is shirk. If the person is thinking about the hadith where the blind man came to the Prophet wasallam and he asked the Prophet wasallam that to ask Allah to make, give me a dua that I can make. And then most people who use this evidence, they try and use this as an evidence to say that you can use the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a means of wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will always find that they fail to quote the full hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, if you keep on reading the hadith, it clearly states that the man states, O oh Allah, through my dua to you and through the Prophet Muhammad's supplication for me. So he was in front of the Prophet, asking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive on this earth. Okay? And then he made dua for himself and he, the Prophet ﷺ, made dua for him as is very clear from the hadith. So sometimes this hadith is used in order to try and twist it to say, look, this man sought forgiveness through the Prophet ﷺ. But that is actually not what it can be understood from that hadith if it is read correctly. Okay.
Would it go into shirk to love someone too much, a son, daughter, wife, friend, etc.? That's a very good question. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Qur'an that there are some people who love others as they should love Allah. But you find those who are the believers, they are over, overflowing with their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you love somebody with the type, there's a special love that you must give only to Allah. We do not love Allah in the same way that we love our wife or we love our children. It is a different type of love. In fact, if you have the love of Allah, astaghfirullah, I have to say this, but I'm saying it because there are some people who actually claim that they have this type of love or they use this word but it's not correct. That they say that they love Allah astaghfirullah with a type of sexual love. A'udhu billah. Yes. But this is shirk. You're not allowed to love Allah with that type of love. The love that you have, the hope that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the love of submission. And this is based upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Kul in kuntum Allah fatabiyuni yahbibkum Allah. Say if it is true that you love Allah fatabiyuni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for the Prophet Muhammad to say to the people, if it's true you love Allah fatabiyuni, make ittiba of me, follow me. Meaning the people who love Allah follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in Islam, the love for Allah is ittiba. It is following Allah's commandments. That is how we show our love for Allah by obeying Him. So if we obey anybody, if we obey a ruler, if we obey a, 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 a scholar, if we obey our wife, if we obey our husband, our children, in, in the level and the way that we should only obey Allah. So whatever they say, we do it. Whatever they command us, we do it. And we accept it and we love them so much that whatever they do, whatever they say, we do it. This is a type of shirk. Because that type of love of absolute obedience must only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Good question. Hey, give me some more, Sheikh. Brother, excuse me everybody, I've got a bit of a sore throat, but... Brother is asking for... Al- no, we did that one already. Jazakallah khair. Is it haram to pray in a chapel? Why? That's a good question. If the chapel does not have any idols in it, it is permissible to pray. On the basis that Umar ibn al-Khattab was invited by the Christians in uh, Jerusalem to pray in their church and he said, I will not pray in there because of your idols. From that we can understand that if there were not any idols, he would have prayed in there. Anyway, this is the opinion of some ulama that I know. Maybe there's some ikhtilaf about it, but this is the understanding that has been given to me. So if there is a chapel without idols and without statues and so on and so forth, then it is permissible to pray in it, wallahu alam, based upon what Umar ibn al-Khattab said. Is it haram to enter a Christian house? No, it is not haram to enter a Christian house. There's a white Subaru rated X. Rated that's the number plate. That's, 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 the number plate. that's the number plate. What, rated X? Yeah. Can you believe it? Can the X-rated Subaru owner please leave, uh, to move the car out of the way, subhanAllah. Yeah, and could the brother or sister please change their number plate as well, please? <laughs> Whatever question, you don't want to insist on. Is it haram to call any kafir your eminence? Um, okay, we sh- it's not correct to honor even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We're allowed, of course, we're allowed to honor the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Please don't get me wrong here. But even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi didn't allow. Uh, he didn't like to allow the Muslims to honor him too much. He said, "I am Abdullah and I am Rasulullah." Even when he used to walk in, he did not allow his companions to stand up for him. Even when he was praying and he was ill and he had to sit down, he ordered the companions also to sit down. Because he said, you nearly did what the Christians do. And when their rulers are sitting, their leaders are sitting, they all stand in respect. So he didn't even like, even though they were not standing, just they were standing there, he didn't even like them to do that. So in fact, to show that type of excessive respect by standing up for someone when they come in, let alone to call them 
uh, your eminence, your honor, because to honor a kafir is not correct. It's not correct. 